Now, after having discussed about the primaquine, let me discuss about the antifolate drugs. Right? These antifolate drugs, these are also the anti-malarial drugs. Right? These are also the anti-malarial drugs. Now, what are these antifolate drugs? The antifolate drugs, remember, they include pyrimethamine. Okay, so the antifolate drugs they include the pyrimethamine. Next, you have progranyl. Right, next you have the progranyl. Then you have sulfadoxin and as well as dapsone. Okay, so you have sulfadoxin and the other drug is dapsone. So these are the antifolate drugs. All right, these are the anti-folate drugs. Now, let me talk about the individual anti-folate drugs. So, like we have discussed the anti-folate drugs, one of it is your progranyl. If you take this progranyl, remember this particular progranyl, it is a prodrug, right? So, this is a prodrug. Now, a point what you should remember is it has to be converted into the active form. This proguanyl which is a prodrug, it is activated to form what is called as the cycloguanyl. So, the active form of the proguanyl is your cycloguanyl. Okay. So, cycloguanyl is the active form of the proguanyl. Next. Now, if you see the mechanism of action of these drugs, remember they are anti-folate drugs. That means what do they do? They will decrease the folate levels. So like you take the two of your anti-folate drugs, drugs like pyrimethamine and as well as cycloguanyl, right? And as well as the cycloguanyl, they act by inhibiting, right? They act by inhibiting an enzyme which is called as dihydrofolate reductase enzyme right they act by inhibiting the enzyme which is called dihydrofolate reductase enzyme so once this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme is inhibited the folic acid synthesis will not occur now in order to have a sequential blockade this pyrimethamine is combined with the sulfadoxin so remember pyrimethamine it is combined with sulfadoxin right it is combined with the sulfadoxin and this combination it will have the sequential blockade right this combination will have the sequential blockade all right so the other important point is you take these drugs that is your pyrimethamine, sulfadoxin. These are slow acting blood schizonticides. Okay. So these are. All right. These are slow acting. Blood schizonticides. Okay. Now this particular pyrimethamine and sulfadoxin. They are active against the chloroquine resistant, the plasmodium falciparum infections. Okay. So, remember this point. This particular combination is useful against the chloroquine resistant plasmodium falciparum infections. Okay. Next. Now, remember this particular proguanil can be combined with other drugs like atovaquone. So, proguanil plus atovaquone can be used for the treatment and as well as the chemoprophylaxis of the chloroquine resistant malaria. Okay. So, remember this another important point. This proguanil, it can be combined with the atovaquone. Right, it can be combined with the atovaquone. Now, what is the advantage of this? This particular combination, it is useful for the treatment 
and as well as right as well as the prophylaxis of prophylaxis of chloroquine resistant malaria right for the treatment and prophylaxis of the chloroquine resistant malaria next let me talk about the atovacun right let me talk about the atovacun now if you take this atovacun remember it is one of the rapidly acting blood schizonticide right so this is one of the rapidly acting blood schizonticide all right this is one of the rapidly acting blood schizonticide and how does this act remember this atovacone it acts by collapsing the parasite's membrane okay so it acts by collapsing the parasite membrane all right it acts by collapsing the parasite's membrane now now you see when you add proguanil to this atovacone proguanil potentiates the anti malarial action of the atovacone okay so remember this point proguanil potentiates the action of atovacone all right proguanil potentiates the action of the atovacone next the other important point is that this particular atovacone it can also be used not only in malaria it can also be used for pneumocystis gyrovaci pneumonia and as well as the toxoplasma gondii infections okay so this atovacone it is also used in case of pneumocystis gyrovaci pneumonia which was previously calling it as pneumocystis carinii pneumonia and this atovacone is also used for the toxoplasma gondii infections okay so that is about here atovacone so let me shortly revise up to here the antifolate drugs that is proguanil it is a product and it is converted into active form which is called the cycloguanil and this cycloguanil and as well as the pyrimethamine they act by inhibiting the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase enzyme pyrimethamine plus sulfadoxin it acts through the sequential blockade and these are slow blood schizonticides that are active against the chloroquine resistant plasmodium falciparum infections now this proguanil it can be combined with atovacone and that can be used for the treatment and as well as the chemo prophylaxis of the chloroquine resistant malaria now you take this atovacone atovacone it is rapidly acting blood schizonticide that acts by collapsing the parasite's membrane and when you add proguanil to the atovacone proguanil potentiates its anti malarial action and remember this atovacone not only used for the treatment of malaria this atovacone is also used for the treatment of the pneumocystis gyrovaci pneumonia and as well as the toxoplasma gondii infections so let me discuss the other group of the anti malarial drugs that is artemisinin derivatives so if you take this artemisinin derivatives the drugs under this class include one is artemisinin this is one of the anti malarial drug and the other artemisinin derivatives they include dihydroartemisinin right they include dihydroartemisinin and then we have artisunate and as well as artimeter right we have artisunate and we have other drug that is right other drug that is artimeter and not only that we have another artemisinin derivative which is nothing but artether right which is nothing but artether 
so these are the compounds which are obtained from a chinese herb which is called as artemisia annua right so all these they are derived from a chinese herb and what is the name of that particular chinese herb it is called as artemisia annua So this is the herb from which the artemisinin derivatives are derived. Now you take this artemisinin. Remember this artemisinin it is a prodrug and this will be activated in the body to what is called as dihydro artemisinin. So remember this artemisinin which is a prodrug within the body it gets activated into what is called as dihydro artemisinin right it is activated in the body into what is called as dihydro artemisinin next now remember these drugs that is artemisinin derivatives they generate a highly active free radicals and the highly active free radicals whichever are generated from the artemisinin or artemisinin derivatives they will damage the parasite membranes okay so remember this artemisinin or artemisinin derivatives what they do they generate right they generate what is called as the highly active free radicals Right? they generate the highly active free radicals and this particular highly active free radicals will damage the parasite membrane all right they will damage the parasite membranes okay next the other important point is that these drugs are the fastest acting drugs against the malaria this will be the multiple choice question so artemisinin derivatives remember these are the fastest acting drugs in malaria or against malaria now among these drugs right you take artisunate artisunate it has very short half life and that is the reason why it can be given intravenously okay so this is another multiple choice question so you take artisunate artisunate it is having shortest t half and this particular drug can be given intravenously okay next now the other important point is that this can be used for the treatment of multi drug resistant malaria right so where all these are used in case of multi drug resistant malaria next not only in case of multi drug resistant malaria these are also used in case of the serious forms of the cerebral malaria right in case of serious forms of cerebral malaria we use this artemisinin or artemisinin derivatives now remember this artemisinin derivatives are not indicated for chemo prophylaxis of malaria they are only useful for the treatment right so they are not useful for right they are not useful for the chemo prophylaxis of malaria now you take the adverse effects associated with this artemisinin derivatives this artemisinin derivatives they rarely cause the qt prolongation right they rarely cause the qt prolongation so this is about your artemisinin derivatives so the artemisinin derivatives include artemisinin dihydro artemisinin artisunate artemether and as well as artether and remember all these drugs they are derived from a chinese herb which is called as 
Artemisia annua. Next. Now, this particular Artemisinin, this is one of the prodrug. And within the body, it is converted into the active form that is called as Dihydro Artemisinin. And this particular Artemisinin, they will generate the free radicals. Alright. So, the free radicals whichever are being generated, that damage the parasite membrane. And remember, these are the fastest acting drugs against the malaria. And artisunate, it has very short half-life and can be given intravenously. And this can be used for the treatment of multidrug resistant malaria as well as in case of the serious forms of cerebral malaria. And remember, this artemisinin derivatives are not indicated for chemoprophylaxis of malaria. And these drugs can cause the QT prolongation but very rarely.